Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of a potentially very useful product that's hit the market recently. And we're going to be talking about all the goods and the bads and the in-betweens with regards to this. It's the successor of its parent product, which is the Soul Source Parabolic Solar Cooker. This one is the Soul Source Sport. And the whole marketing angle behind this system is its so-called portability. So let's talk about it. All right, so as some of you may know, probably two years ago now, I tested out the larger Soul Source parabolic solar cooker, and I determined that the main use of that is going to be boiling water. Uh, primarily, that would be your main use for it, although you certainly can cook with that parabolic solar cooker. It's a very powerful solar cooker. It can generate almost 1,000 watts of energy Praxis Prepper also made a video about it. He uses this at his homestead. His opinion was in agreement with mine that for homesteaders and preppers, the primary use of this would be for boiling water. Now, it can be used for cooking all different types of food. You can use it to bake things. You can use it to fry things. Uh, but there are certain limitations that I'm going to talk about uh, later on in the video. Now, right out of the gates, I should add that there's going to be people in the comment section saying that I can make that. And most certainly you can, you can go down to Dan Rojas channel at Green Power Science and he'll show you how to make a parabolic solar cooker out of an old satellite dish with strips of mylar or some kind of reflective material, whatever kind of reflective material you can find, you could probably make yourself one of these. Uh, the problem with that is if you're going to make it from scratch, you're going to have to make a mold and it does actually take a lot more work than people think to get a very smooth concave surface which is precise enough to reflect the sun's rays and concentrate them like you want it's not enough that you can just mold some tin foil with your hands and achieve this that might work to an extent with something like a solar oven but in order to reach the high temperatures and the high efficiency especially if you're wanting to fry things or boil water then a parabolic solar cooker is the way to go they also heat up the fastest Right when the sun is focused on this thing, it's instantly as hot as it's going to get, which is around 450 degrees Celsius. Now, I'm talking mainly about the original parabolic cooker, just to give you some background, because I still do think that that is a much more superior product than this product I'm going to be talking about today, which is being marketed for its portability. I just want to briefly talk about some of the differences. So the original parabolic cooker put out 1000 watts. Now to give you an idea of that, that's a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy to heat stuff up, which is why this is such an important tool for a homesteader, a prepper, survivalist, what have you. A 1000 watt oven is going to cause significant drain on whatever sort of renewable power system you might have at your homestead. So for instance, the Energy Kodiak power source is a 1.1 kilowatt hour battery. And if you do the math on that, that means that it's going to be able to basically power this one burner that you see here for about an hour and then the battery is going to be fully depleted. So that's not that long considering it can power other things like a fridge for 12 to 24 hours, depending on the size of the fridge. The process of converting electricity into thermal energy is highly demanding. So if you are using combustibles like various types of fuel or wood, it's going to save you a lot of wood or fuel every year. If you're using this on a daily basis, if only just to boil water in the mornings like Praxis Prepper does. Now the smaller one puts out 600 watts, so almost about half the power and where the large one can achieve a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius, which in some cases is almost too high. I'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, this one can reach 200 degrees Celsius, which is obviously enough to boil water at 100 degrees Celsius and you can fry things and you know cook bacon, eggs, those types of things on this as well. If you have dehydrated meals, freeze dried meals, this is gonna be more than sufficient to heat up the water or boil any pathogens out of there so you can have usable potable water. Now the large one is gonna be able to support more weight and a larger pot. The size of the pot you use will obscure the reflector a bit. So if you put a big massive pot on this thing, 
that's going to be blocking the rays that are coming in from the sun and reflecting underneath to actually heat up the pot. So you're going to want to use a smaller, taller pot whenever possible. The smaller unit can hold about 12 pounds, which is still fairly significant. That's about five to six liters of water or roughly just a little bit above a gallon of water. And based on my testing, it takes around 10 to 15 minutes to bring about one liter of water to a boil. That might seem like a lot of time, but you know, it's pretty low maintenance for the most part. If you're using it in summertime, there's going to be less sun tracking because the sun's higher than the sky and it sort of moves slower. Obviously, the sun doesn't move slower anytime. It's always moving the same speed. But in summer, you're getting longer days and the sun is further away. So you don't have to do as much tracking in wintertime. It's going to take longer because you're going to have heat loss due to convection, conduction, uh, all the ways that heat is lost to the environment. It's because you're going to have to use this outside unless you're using it in like a glass enclosure or something like that. You could use this inside. And that's one of the other great things about this is it's smoke free. So you can cook inside with it. No problem. Now let's talk about the pros of the Golsun Sport. Now this reflector is top notch. Uh, it's going to be very hard for you to make reflector this good with materials in a time which is going to be worth your while i mean you may be able to achieve something close to this after a couple days worth of work if your time isn't worth 250 dollars for two days and that's not including you know building the stand and considering the portability factor how you can take this one down and, and all the rest uh, it might not be worth your while and I'm talking about you know you, you'd have to be pretty handy to build a reflector like this that's this smooth and this effective it's not as easy as people think as previously indicated heating anything takes an immense amount of energy which is why most heating is done through natural gas and not through electricity because when you're converting electricity into thermal energy it's a very inefficient process this really does resolve a significant part of that issue now you're going to be limited like i said on cloudy days you're not going to be able to use this it might function somewhat but it's never going to function as good as when it's in full sunlight not like one of the solar cooking ovens like the go source or other ones that i've reviewed on this channel which will function in those lower light but you are much more restricted with what you can put in those and the the size and the amounts of foods that you can cook and all the rest Another great benefit of something like this, besides its portability, which is questionable in my opinion, uh, is that there's no sound. So it's not like a gas stove where, you know, it's emitting a, a sound or the crackling of a fire. Uh, you're going to have scent discipline because you're not going to be emitting smoke. Like I said, you can use it indoors if you're in a glass or clear enclosure. So if you're talking about operational security in a grid down situation, this is going to be one of the stealthiest ways possible to cook food. And of course, the energy of the sun is pretty much unlimited. But this is going to depend on where you are in the world. The more north you are, uh, like here, here it's going to be great in the spring and summer because we have very long days. I think our days are actually much longer than down south. But in the winter time, you're going to be very limited as to when you can actually use this effectively. Now let's talk about the portability. So it comes in a backpack. Uh, I think they were rather ambitious to try to put something like this into a portable product. Personally, my opinion is that their original parabolic solar cooker they put out was excellent. I think that they should keep refining that product. I think that the Ghost Source Sport, uh, in terms of portability, yeah, it's good if you're very eco-conscious and uh, maybe you you know you want something like this for a bug out location, and maybe you do you just like cooking using the sun on the go then yeah, this is as good as it's gonna get in terms of portability. There's nothing like it on the market that is as portable and does what it does. Hands down, it's the only thing out there uh, that's gonna be able to achieve that. There are some solar ovens and panel cookers that are on the market, but they're not gonna be able to achieve the cooking speed that something like this is going to achieve for the most part. But as you can see, it's still fairly large. So it's questionable how portable this thing really is it does fold down you get a backpack with it now it's fairly easy to set up and take down in theory but 
I found that the little screws or connector pieces that uh, connect it all together, they're kind of hard to push in there and they're very difficult to pull out. You really have to uh, play with them a bit, I find, to pull out. And I actually did break one uh, by pulling it out the wrong way. I think I was getting a little frustrated. So I think they could improve the ease of screwing this in i think they're they were trying to do it in a way which is going to be fast and effective but for somebody with smaller fingers uh, a person who wasn't as strong who didn't have as much nano dexterity you might have problems getting this thing apart and putting it together actually putting it together is actually quite easy it's the taking the pins out that hold it together which can be kind of a pain in the butt above and beyond that though the design was good i just think this was one of those things that you know few inventors sat around and said you know how could we do this in a portable way without ever thinking about what the actual use for this might be or who might use it i mean they have uh, advertisement of people taking it to the beach and and doing that so yeah there's a novelty feature to it but Asides from a grid down situation, you would probably always want to take a, you know, like a portable jet boil or, or some gas powered soap because it's just going to be that much quicker. It's relatively clean. You know, if you're talking about your eco consciousness and carbon footprint and whatnot. So I just don't know if I can get behind the rationale of a portable solar cooker, but as a fixed system, like their original parabolic solar cooker, I think is awesome. And I think they should really try to keep enhancing that system. That's what my advice to the company would be, is to go with what's practical. I mean, we don't haul barbecues around to the beach. And so why would you wanna haul your parabolic solar cooker out to the beach? This really is a fixed outdoor, I'll go as far as to call it an appliance. I just don't know if the market for portability is there, but hey, you know, as things green up even more and more and people become more eco-conscious, there may well be a legitimate market for something like this. Personally, I think it might have to be a little bit bigger in order to get some better uh, cooking performance out of it but uh, maybe that's something they can work on in the future. Now, uh, some of the other cons of these things is, like I said, it's generally quite large. Uh, this is, if you have another backpack that you're gonna be hiking into a place, uh, you're not gonna be able to hike the, your backpack plus this, unless somebody in your party is the dedicated pack mule just to carry out this one system. Uh, the other problem I have with both of these systems, it's something they, need to work on and I think it would be a relatively easy fix uh, you could probably just uh, jerry-rig this and do this yourself but there needs to be an elevation adjustment and what I mean by that is that the place where you put the pot on the focal point of the solar cooker is at the basically the finest point of the solar cooker as far as I can tell uh, they set it up so that the Sun's light is going to be focused mostly in that one spot but if you had an elevation adjustment what you would avoid is having the sun's light too concentrated in that one spot and what I mean by that is what happens is what in my original testing of the larger parabolic solar cooker what would happen is all that heat would concentrate into the center point and so the stuff that was in the center would cook but the stuff on the periphery of that would not get as hot and I think I might have even demonstrated that using a thermal imaging device to show how hot the center of the pot got and not the peripheral. So what that, what that adjustable elevation would allow you to do is either enlarge or shrink that focal point to where you want it. And what I asked the company to do was send me one of their grills, which is supposed to uh, diffuse and radiate that heat throughout the whole pan. So it has these fins these heat dissipation ridges, if you will, that diffuse the heat throughout the entire pan. And I asked them to send me one of those because I said, you know, that's gonna be essential if you're gonna want to fry stuff with this. Cause I tried frying fish with the original one and the fish got pretty messed up because you have to keep the meat over the hottest part in order to really cook the meat like you want it. 
and uh, it means you have to move the meat around a lot and then it breaks up in little pieces and unless you have a really firm steak or something like that you might run into similar problems like that so either they need a dedicated pot that they're gonna sell with this device because what you don't want to do is sell a device like this and have people use it and be disappointed because the heat isn't radiating with any pot like it's supposed to uh, you may be able to throw a walk on this and you might get you know a similar effects like you would using a wok to stir fry uh, things like that where the heat is concentrated on that focal point at the apex or whatever you want to call it of the curve but not everything gets cooked in a wok and so both of these uh, systems track fairly easily they move on two dimensions so you can do the tilt and you can also uh, do the side to side movement so you can track the sun with relative ease it, there's no built-in sun tracker uh, that would be kind of cool if there was something like that which could lock onto the sun just like solar panels lock onto the sun uh, maybe in the future they could incorporate a low power drain system that could incorporate that in there so you didn't actually have to stand there and keep turning it like i said in summer you're not going to have to uh, maintain it as much because the sun is higher in the sky and it's going to take much longer for the focal point to pass over the pot and of course the other con is in winter losing heat due to convection conduction and you're going to be limited in terms of the geographical regions you can use this in most regions in the world in summertime it's going to work but in the winter time in the northern climates it's going to be extremely limited so there's one more thing i should mention about the reflector is that you might notice that it's an incomplete reflector so the top part is there's no mirror there uh, to complete it and that's so that you can actually you know uh, access your pot and stuff like that uh, from the back end of it i think maybe they could achieve a faster heating and higher temperatures if they filled that gap with another reflector and you just had the person stand off to the side or something if you touch the reflector itself you're never going to get burned it's only when you put your hand over it that you're actually going to get burned so this is something that you want to exercise caution with you don't want to leave this out unattended you always want to keep it covered especially if you have kids or something around if they go and they put their hand in there it's going to get instantly burned because it's at that focal point it's always 200 degrees celsius that's something to keep in mind or 450 degrees celsius for the larger parabolic solar cooker but just to demonstrate how hot it is, I took one piece of the panel here and you can see that it's actually igniting a piece of wood on fire. So it is a very powerful unit, it's especially if you maybe, you know, had exhausted your water purification uh, system and you ran out of ways to purify water. So you had to resort to boiling water. Uh, this could do that for you and it could do it in the most low key way possible. In my personal opinion, every homesteader should have a parabolic solar cooker or in the very least a solar oven in order to cook their food. Just like anything, you can make it yourself, but unless you're willing to commit many, many, many hours to doing so, it's not gonna function as good. Uh, you could probably build a much larger one and it's gonna function way better than this. Like if you could get yourself a very large parabola and uh, you line that with some reflective material then yeah it's going to function even better than this not many people are going to actually do that so anyways let me know what you think in the comment section thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe canadian prepper out the best way to show your support for the channel is by gearing up through canadianpreparedness.com or from my american subscribers bugoutroll.ca our prices are as good if not better than Amazon, our shipping is just as fast if not faster, and our products are top notch, so go check it out.